In doing my helicopter flyover videos, people ask me uh, a lot of questions uh, about helicopters, and <laughs> logically, one of the questions is, what happens if the engine shuts off? And uh, we're here with Steve from Lone Star Helicopters. He's an instructor, very experienced pilot, a generally nice guy. Steve, since you know so much about helicopters, tell us what happens when the engine shuts off. Well, so in powered flight, the uh, main rotors, which are basically just rotary wings, rotating wings, just like on an airplane, except they're rotating. Um, if in powered flight, the engine's running them. In the event that your engine will fail, uh, your rotors aren't just going to stop. It's kind of like, say, on a mountain bike or a 10-speed bike. If you're pedaling and you stop pedaling, your back wheel is going to continue to spin yeah. because it has what we call a freewheeling unit in it. Yeah. If our engine was to fail, uh, what I would do is I would get rid of the pitch, the mechanical drag of the main rotor, and I would flatten out the pitch. And by flattening out the pitch, you get rid of the drag and it allows the rotor to continue to spin. The other thing that happens is the flow of the air through the rotor system and powered flight is essentially being sucked in like a vacuum yeah. from the top. In the event your engine quits, you're going to start descending. You're not going to just fall out of the sky. You're going to start gliding. You're going yeah. to start descending. But what's going to happen with that air is it's going to reverse flow, and it's going to start coming up through the rotor system from the bottom. So essentially, if you've ever seen a pinwheel that you just blow on and it starts spinning, that's what happens to the rotor system. The rotor system just start, keeps spinning. If you've ever seen those little leaves that uh, fall out of trees and they um, kind of have a wing and they'll spin, have you seen those? Yeah. I'm sure they have a name. The YouTube commenters will know what those leaves are called. But whatever those leaves are called, uh, they spin and they kind of gently descend down. That's exactly how a helicopter descends, provided that when the engine stops, you quickly lower that collective. Because there's only so much inertia in the rotor system. In an airplane, Airspeed is your lifeline. If you yeah. don't have airspeed, you stall and you'll you'll start to fall. Now, in a helicopter, airspeed doesn't matter when you enter an auto rotation. What is our lifeline is rotor RPM. Yeah. I want airspeed when I get down towards the ground to slow my rate of descent and to convert it into some more rotor RPM to cushion my landing. But in an auto rotative descent, uh, when I have altitude, what I really care about is rotor RPM, just keeping those rotors spinning. Yeah, so as long as the rotors are spinning, the helicopter is still flying. That's right. And so uh, so rotor speed is life. So it really occurs in a few different stages. So your engine stops, you have to quickly lower the collective, um, that reduces pitch, and then uh, air is coming up uh, through the rotor system, keeping it spinning, keeping the helicopter flying. And then you would mentioned uh, airspeed being critical when you are coming to uh, your landing because you don't want to descend at that rate into the ground. So you want to slow it so you can make a nice cushion landing. That's and right. so the way you do that is with a cyclic flare. So imagine you're coming down at this angle, you nose up, and you're trading airspeed to arrest your descent and to, to make a nice smooth landing. We've kind of talked through it a little bit. Would you like to demonstrate what uh, an auto rotation looks like? I would, absolutely. So in a turbine helicopter, unlike a piston, when you do a practice auto rotation, you enter one you always roll the throttle off first because you don't want to overspeed what we call our N1 RPM. Gotcha. In a piston helicopter, you would lower the collective first and then roll off. Yeah. So when we enter an auto, the way I teach it is we always do a countdown. There's no surprises here. So three, two, one. I'm going to lower the collective. I'm going to come aft on our cyclic. I'm going to add right pedal. The throttle is rolled off. By the way, that's such a gentle entry there. That, that didn't feel dramatic at all. No. So now the engine or the, the uh, turbine is not powering the helicopter. You can see our N2 is, is down. Yeah. It's in idle right now. The rotor RPM on the other hand, I've got that right smack in the middle of the green. I do have some airspeed here and I want to go for a certain area. Let's say we're going to go for this area right here called Arkansas Bend. Okay. Okay. So we're just going to bring it on down. Slow it down a little bit. So right now you're managing airspeed and uh, trying to get your right angle so you can uh, hit the spot, kind of uh, a lot right. of 3D uh, figuring. That's right, yeah. So I'm just bleeding off the airspeed for my angle. I'm going to lower my collective. i fall a little bit here. Oh, this is fun. By the way, this feels super casual. I don't, I, this is not going to seem dramatic at all, I think, on video. And so yeah, you're nosing forward there, you're getting that airspeed. So you can uh, make a nice cyclic flare. This is all looking very, very good. Gonna come down. Gonna start nosing up. Freak start out the people flare. at the uh, party boat over there. 
in a turbine, you got to roll on your throttle early to let that rotor RPM build up. And then you would just touch down. Yeah. And by the way, this is not a smooth surface, so touching down there in an emergency, sure, you would. But here, we're just four dudes flying in a helicopter. No need to bend anything. Bye. By the way, people love people in a helicopter. You notice that? Everybody wants to wave at the people in the helicopter. You have to be ready to wave. You are a celebrity if you're flying <laughs> a helicopter. It's true. That was a really um, non-dramatic auto rotation. The auto rotation really is a non-event. As long as you enter it properly in the beginning, the glide's a non-event. I personally, being an airplane pilot myself, I would rather be in a helicopter any day in an emergency, particularly an engine failure, because like we talked earlier, you can literally land on a dime yeah. anywhere. Yeah, so there are a few different things that you were doing there too, because I think when you first start learning how to do auto rotations, it's very much like you're already lined up, uh, you kind of nose in, drop the collective, and it's just trying to maintain that like 60 knots or whatever, like there's that sort of target airspeed. But what I saw you do there, which is uh, I think uh, speaks to your experience, is you were playing around with it a little bit. So you really slowed the helicopter down so you could figure out when that right time was to regain air speed to make your landing to really hit that spot. So that was uh, what we call a power recovery auto rotation, yeah. and that's very, very common. And correct me if I'm wrong, but it's, it's because more people were injured practicing full uh, auto rotations all the way to the ground. That's what a full down is, is when yeah. you touch the skids to the ground, then people were um, injured like in, in actual emergency scenarios. Right, right. So the, con the consequences to botching up if you will, a full down is exactly that. You can really botch it up. I mean, the the power recovery is technically safer, a little bit more margin, but the full down auto is actually easier to execute. No pressure, but if you would like to demonstrate a full down auto, not my helicopter, so I, I you know, follow your heart, but you're welcome to do so. I thought you'd never ask. Hey! All right. That's the right response. By the way, where are we? So we are at Lago Vista Airport, and Lago Vista Airport is in the hill country just northwest of Austin, Texas, and uh, Lago Vista Airport sits on top of this little plateau up here overlooking Lake Travis. And this is where you operate out of, right? That's, that's correct. What do you do here? So uh, we provide uh, helicopter management, aircraft management, brokerage. Uh, we do hog hunts. We do power line surveys, flight training. I've uh, put a link down in the description below. And by the way, if you didn't hear, he uh, mentioned hog hunts. That's a big thing here in Texas a, yeah. because they're super invasive. And so to solve two problems, problem number one, too many hogs. Problem number two, not enough shooting out of helicopters. That's right. So when you combine those problems, you get an amazing solution. Absolutely. Real quick, as far as the full down auto, yeah. I want to do it just with you and I in here. Copy. Okay, so yeah. I can do a power recovery auto here. Yeah, yeah, let's do a power recovery okay. here. All right, so if I was teaching you and we we're going to do a a straight-in auto, say our first time, we would line up. Helicopters are very much flown by feel and visual reference. Yeah. So I'm going to look out and watch where I'm going, just like you do a car. So we're flying along here, watching where we're going. I'm going to pick a spot that I actually want to go to, that I want to hit. And when we're ready to go, we'll count down. Three, two, one. We'll roll the throttle off, we'll lower it down, add right pedal, half cyclic, catch that rotor RPM early. And you catch it by pulling up collective a that, little bit, correct? That is correct, that is correct. Now I'm gonna start slowing down. Yeah, so you're managing your uh, your hit points by controlling your airspeed, right? That's right. Yeah, so we're coming into more of a, uh, not vertical, but uh, a more s a steeper descent. Well, I'm bringing it back to the recommended auto rotation speed for this helicopter which is about 60 knots. Cool. Yeah, so you're managing the rotor RPM with the collective, which is the one on the left. About 40 feet, we're gonna start a nice gentle flare here. So you're pulling back on the cyclic. I am. I'm rolling the throttle on now because like we talked about in a turbine, turbines are very powerful, but they take a moment to spool up. Yeah. So I roll it on in the flare. But yeah, in a, uh, in a real scenario right there, we would just touch down. That seems so easy. That, like all difficult things, it seems easy until you have to do it. <laughs> right, right. There, no matter how often you practice, there's always going to be that element of surprise. But it just goes to show why you should practice. Yeah, totally. And now we're going to ditch the dead weight and go do a pull down. 
Absolutely. <laughs> Beat it! <laughs> okay, we ditched two guys. Uh, you ditched your coffee. Um, so we're going to go run through a full down. Yeah. If you can do a power recovery, you can 100% do a full down auto. The most important thing, the key to a full down auto is you have to get those skids level and you have to maintain your rotor RPM until you are in fact ready to pull. Because once you start pulling to uh, cushion that landing, that's when your rotor RPM starts decaying. Yeah, yeah. All right, lights out, gauges in the green, and we're all clear, doors are latched. Clear the rack. Here we go. Oh. Of the traffic helicopters are on over. Makila is going to be lifting from the southeast hangars for uh, right clothes traffic 1 5 Lago Vista. Your pilot voice game is really strong. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't do the. Uh... Oh, gosh, oh. <laughs> okay, so uh, we're on our downwind leg and. Uh, yeah, we're doing a standard pattern here. We have upwind, crosswind, we're on downwind right now. We're gonna round the base, and then we're gonna be on final, final approach. And when we're on final approach, we'll uh, we'll assess our area, and we'll go ahead and enter an auto, and if everything looks good at our 100-foot check, we'll take it all the way to the ground. We uh, ditched two guys. Why did we ditch two guys for, uh, for the full down? Well, so it's not a problem having them in here, but because we are in fact practicing and we want to salvage the helicopter, yeah. you know, it's getting rid of a, you know, 300 pounds in the back um, isn't bad for the airframe, especially if you're doing yeah. pull downs, and it gives us just a little bit of. Uh, Traffic Archer 44037, uh, west end of the field, be taxiing towards the hold short. Helicopter, did you say you're close pattern? That's uh, permit, sir. We're right base, ready to turn final. No problem, we have you in sight, and we'll be back taxi in 1-5 after your arrival. All right, roger that. Cool, so you're, uh, you mentioned on uh, one of the previous uh, autos, it's very much a feel experience when you fly a helicopter. Right. Um, it's not just, like, numbers. Right. It's, it's very much just sort of being in the moment and uh, kind of feeling it out. And that, I imagine, it was really driven by experience. Yeah, well, yeah, and I, I teach that from the get-go. I mean, that's how you fly an aircraft. It's, it's feel and visual reference, and you also have to understand, if you're looking at my hand now, I've got yeah. my fingers on it. These things are hydraulically boosted, Yeah. so it's like power steering. A little does a lot. Literally, if I pull it over just an inch, look at how much we turn. Yeah. All right? All right. Cool. So walk us through. All right, so we're going to enter an auto. Here, so in three, two, one, we're going to go down, uh, roll off, down collective, aft cyclic, right pedal. I'm going to catch my rotor RPM. I'm bringing my airspeed back to our 60 knots, which is recommended for practice. That's the low rotor RPM horn. That's not a big deal. Mm -hmm. Yep, still in the green. I'm going to come down, 100 foot checks are looking great. I'm straight down the runway. I'm going to start a nice flare. I'm going to let that rotor RPM Log really Log of Archer 44037, back taxi runway 15. Log of Start Vista. leveling off here. And we're going to just touch down. And when you touch down, uh, what's the secret to not letting it dig in? Because you got a lot of friction. you got metal grinding on, on uh, tarmac. Once we touch down, I don't take that collective and just get rid of all my lift by lowering it down to flat pitch. I'm lowering it gradually. Yeah. Kind of like when you're coming to a stop sign, you're just adding the brakes gradually as opposed to slamming them on. Well, maybe you are. I drive like an idiot. Well, I know you're a race car driver, <laughs> right? <laughs> That's true. That's true. That seemed really, really uh, non-eventful. Yeah. Non-eventful is not a word, but you know what I mean. All right. I think we've pretty well covered auto rotations. If you guys have any other questions about helicopters, leave them in the comment section. Uh, I want to thank Steve. Steve for flying us so Absolutely. ably. If you want to go uh, fly or you have any helicopter related needs in Austin, uh, check him out. There's a link in the description below. Check out Flying Eye sunglasses. That's what we're wearing and they are super fantastic. Look, I can easily take them off and put them on with the headsets on. And uh, thank you guys for uh, supporting the channel. All right, let's go do more flying. All right, let's go.